In deep sky imaging, we're predominantly concerned with something called signal to noise ratio. However, the term signal to noise ratio is inherently misleading because it implies that signal and noise are mutually exclusive concepts. Whereas in reality, noise is signal and we're attempting to overcome it with the signal that we're actually interested in, which is the one that's being emitted from our deep sky object of choice. This simple yet dramatic illustration from Charles Bracken's excellent third edition of his book, Deep Sky Imaging Primer, shows us that in effect, i.e. how powerful that square root concept is when it comes to stacking our deep sky images. In effect, what's happening is that the accrual of those photons across the stacking process is happening faster than the correlating accrual of noise in the stack. And by that process, we are then enhancing the signal to noise ratio of the end image. If you will, tilting the balance in favor of the signal that we're interested in against the signal that we're not interested in, i.e. the uncertain randomness of noise being generated in our images by our equipment. All you need to understand is the basic concept of increasing or improving signal to noise ratio by overwhelming or swamping the noise signal with the signal that we're actually interested in. And we do that by stacking our images. So the most important thing is total integration time total imaging time. It's by that that we enhance our images. We harness the power of that square root law, i.e. double the signal that we're interested in, four times as much imaging time required. By undertaking that exercise, we can ensure that the noise will be overcome and our images will become how we want them. In the last two weeks, I have been focusing on getting up an image of Bubble Nebula, which you see here. This is 10 hours of data. It's about five hours of S2, two hours of HA, and three hours of O3. Because of what was going on with my rig across that time as I was moving to a three nanometer S2 filter, I was messing around with different sub-exposure lengths across this two week period. Hence why this image is comprised of different sub-exposure lengths on every single channel. So HA is done at three minute subs, S2 is done at four minute subs, and O3 is done at five minute subs. Now weighted batch pre-processing, which is the method that I use to stack those subs, handled it really well. So I had different flats for the different uh, nights across different sub-exposure lengths. And so managed to finally get that to work in uh, weighted batch pre-processing. Thanks to my buddy Ryan over at Dark Rangers Inc. Please go and check him out, give him a follow. Uh, he helped me out with a tolerance setting. This one, darks, exposure tolerance. But anyway, setting that to one, then enabled Pix Insight to detect all of my flats here and allocate them correctly. So happy days. What if I tell you there's a hobby out there that will test your patience yeah. like no other and getting transferred into the body of the camera? That will satisfy your tinkering needs. That will drain your bank account. That will mean you don't need to come into contact with anyone, ever. Welcome to the world of mono astrophotography. This is Astro with Chris.